um, the first year of which was was last year, and we got to bring together a whole bunch of alumni from different years um, around this idea of how can we engage with the college, share our experience, and in some cases, wisdom. Certainly, in Ulrich's case, not <laughs> not in my not on my own, and. Um, find a way to really um, help, uh, help the college dis you know, discover its past and inform its future. And I think one thing we came away from uh, last year was realizing we should have recorded the alum who came and um, they had such rich and fascinating experiences. And it was just brilliant to have them in the same room as students and, and to have that sort of shared um, you know, that shared experience of being young, of discovering the world uh, for the first time and seeing the similarities and differences um, in experiences. So with that idea in mind, we thought um, that we could um, begin recording alumni uh, memories and weaving together a, a documentary, a sort of history of the college. And given this really difficult time we're all in of COVID, um, it seemed like perhaps this was something we could do online. So I'm really thrilled to have one of the alums who was there last year with us, Ulrich, um, who has very kindly agreed to be our first sort of guinea pig for what this process might be. Um, we've got a group of brilliant students. I'm um, really grateful for Nick Benyon uh, his, um, for bringing together. He's a, a, a staff member at the college. The students are history students and they've been formulating some questions to put to Ulrich and they've broken up into teams that are um, that are then going to produce short documentaries about each, each decade and uh, we're going to then try and weave them together over the next few weeks as we conduct interviews. And um, the purpose of this session is to, is to sort of have a live experiment with how this might look for uh, subsequent interviews. So we've got Ulrich, we've got um, JP, um, who's from the 90s from, from, from my cohort, who have agreed to be um, to uh, to be the guinea pigs and we have the students with their questions um, so um, that's the the structure of the uh, of the session we're going to be putting questioning our alum and then you know sort of discussing how you know what is what is you know how does what is memory what's important about the past um, and I, I think that could be a great conversation for us all to join in together so um, Nick, may, um, maybe I just hand things over to you just to sort of introduce um, your work as a, you know, in history and with the students and, and you know, how this relates to the college today. Yeah, um, it's uh, nothing, not a lot more to add to what Jack said there really, but we're looking at developing a new curriculum and one of the modules that we're looking at is um, how we use the past um, in order to inform the present um, um, so that we can um, plan for a, um, a better present and a better future really and so we, we, we've been very interested in, in, in looking at that and what, we're, what we've sort of knocked it around a little bit and what we've thought is that um, it's really good to start at the local level with your community and then to go up from there so um, one of the things that this is almost like a mini version of the sort of outcome of that, the potentially of that course, um, which will be, as we said, a documentary about it. But the idea is, isn't just to look back and reminisce. And uh, I mean, it's lovely to do that and it's lovely to have anecdotes and so on, but it's actually an idea of actually making change. And there's a lot of, um, uh, a lot of things said about the past at the college um, for good and for bad. Um, and so it's just interesting, the sort of questions that you ask about the past are going to elicit certain things. And there are things in the past that are definitely buried that we want to try and bring back. So there's a lot of things about, for example, the, um, I mean, the classic one is the lifeboats. Um, there's things said, you know, a lot of that has entered into mythology and a lot of it is 
Um, uh, there are people in the, in the college who feel that, that should be a stronger part of the college. And, uh, and so bringing back these stories and bringing, you know, can actually help, help to inform the narrative and influence the present. So that's just like one sort of example of, of what we're thinking. So we're hoping that by putting together, I mean, this is just going to be in this project week, but like uh, little documentaries of the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, noughties, um, and the, the, whatever you call the teens, uh, the 2010s. By, by doing that, we're hoping that some sort, we will bring ideas back that perhaps have been a little buried in the past um, in order to sort of influence the present. Um, and so this is the very first um, outing we have into this into this new territory, really. So um, I'm very excited about it. And it's really great to have the two um, filmmakers, um, uh, Harry and Chloe, involved uh, also, um, as well as Jack, because Jack's very good at obviously asking questions about the past also. So, um, so yeah, I hope everyone will, will get involved and I hope the students will ask questions and will learn from what they're doing. Yeah, so I, so I think um, that's a, a, a good point just to um, have Ulrich and JP and maybe the students all introduce themselves just so we're all sort of have a sense of um, who's who. Um, and I should just say that I'm a, an alum from 95, 97. I've been a journalist for most of my career and now I'm a sort of history book, book writer. And um, yeah, so I'm sort of often doing interviews and engaged engaged with the past. Um, Ulrich, um, uh, would you, could you just uh, introduce yourself to everyone so that... Um... Of course, I think you've seen a lot of my, uh, what, this lovely CV, which I've never managed in my life to put together so concisely and so flatteringly <laughs> as Magda did. So, uh, yeah, I am uh, one of the, I joined in the 60s, 66 to 68. And I must uh, emphasize, I'm not one of the first crop. I mean, there are, I think, two sets or three sets that did before us. How they did, I don't know. So we, th we, we thought it was a wild place with pirates and, you know, outlaws, anarchists, and uh, really people who wouldn't listen to anybody. But how must it have been in the beginning? Yeah. When, when the founders of the school, you know, had to pick up those people wherever they found them, taking that risk of what, uh, learning the London board A level <laughs> and trying to go to you somewhere later on to university. So anyway, it was civilized, but still it was, uh, it was a tough thing. And in addition, you know, I mean, it's 50 plus years now. It was uh, 66, 68, was really, really scary uh, 50 years ago. Uh, and uh, in the political situation was something that hit us like a hammer. Not everybody. There were people building boats and gluing together the uh, rigid hull and <laughs> thing, and nothing could disturb them. And they looked at the sea and they waited for that horn to, uh, to klaxon to uh, call them out, which didn't happen that often. Nonetheless, I don't, shouldn't belittle that, uh, that enthusiasm. There were, uh, you know, MLK. <clears throat> was murdered in April for <clears throat> yeah, April 11, we had Rudy Dutschke who was shot. Uh, some of you may not be familiar with him, some are. He was um, a German activist mm, who made it into the West. Uh, <laughs> three days before the war closed, but he was definitely not a Westerner in a sense. Then he, he, he died 11 years later, not before uh, a fellow, uh, a conservative government under Edward Heath kicked him out of Clare Hall in, uh, in Cambridge because uh, calling him a subversive and, uh, you know, the man was sick and was trying to finish his studies there and he had gotten a scholarship. Then, uh, of course, we have, uh, we have um, Kennedy uh, met his assassin in, in June 68, uh, a year before we had Israel launching the Six Day War. And uh, it was a war of choice, like all the wars there, all its wars. And then uh, we had uh, the Tet Offensive in January 68. 
And of course, uh, we had the killing of Benno Onesark in Berlin by a policeman uh, when he uh, was a bystander at a demonstration against the Shah of Iran. So uh, all those things hit us very much. There was no internet. There was just the TV and that little ante room uh, that connects the, uh, the stairs to the library with the, with the dining hall. Or that, that is such a reminder, isn't it? We, we think like now is such a sort of, <laughs> such a critical time and such big issues. But of course that run through of what happened during your time in college, just a reminder of um, both, you know, the sort of enduring battle for rights and freedoms um, that sort of ca connects it, each generation. It, right? um, it polarized, I, I, you see? Yeah, let me just step in and, and have um, JP, because he uh, have JP introduce himself as well. Uh, JP, can you unmute and, and, tell us just, uh, and tell us just a bit about yourself? Oh, uh, uh, you have to just click that um, bottom left button. Yeah. Can you, can you hear me now? Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Greetings to everyone, first of all. And what a pleasure. What a pleasure. It's a, and I have to say, we have to thank this to the technology, since we are a bunch of international people. <laughs> um, I still have a word called the Hogwarts, you know, so the magic people, the magic beans. <laughs> um, my name is Jean-Patrick Bimenyimana. And I'm from East Africa, a very small country in the East. We like to call ourselves the bedrock of humanity. <laughs> um, I, I came in AC in 95-97 and in circumstances that I still call magical, you know, because uh, I think I had it in my dreams to come to AC. Uh, in dreams, not just dreaming, but uh, like appar apparition. You know, I remember being in AC, go like, wow, that's what I foresaw. And uh, because I come from a country where we have decades of inter-ethnic killings um, that have left so many lives and still at it right now, right now, still on it, right now, this second. And um, to be able to come in AC, I remember I woke up once in a hospital bed. Uh, people think I'm gonna die because I dropped from 76 kilos to probably uh, 36 kilos, something like that. So I couldn't eat, I couldn't go to the loo. I had only one lung and I had uh, purse pus in my lung. I had worms coming out of the tubes that was feeding me. And the doctor said, you have to be transferred, otherwise you, you're a dead man. And by the luck of God, I don't know how, I, I ended up in, in Nairobi, in the hospital. But before I left, I remember there was a priest they brought to me, it was a, a white priest, I think it was Belgian. And he came to say the last rites, because they, they had no hope about it. And, uh, and that night, I had this dream. And the dream was me standing between the person who shot me and this form of God, and the other one was me. And we didn't use the words. And uh, this power B asking me what I have to say to the person who inflicted almost a fatal blow. And I kind of said something like, I forgive him because he don't know what he's done. Because I don't believe we are born bad. This world teach us, you can see the children, how they live, you know, from class to ethnics, you see how they're so, they're just spiritual beings and all that, you know? And I remember telling the priest with a smile when he came to do uh, last rites, and I look at him and I look and say, with a smile, and I say, I don't think this is the end. <laughs> he goes like, what are you trying to say? I was like, I had a dream last time. You know, I had a dream that I would travel the world because where I live, I feel like I live between four walls and the reality between that four walls, I don't think that's it. I believe there's more out there. 
you know. He goes, really? I said, yeah. I saw it in the dreams. And uh, I even had a, a one, f I met a lot of people from all cultures. And at the back of it, I had a little fancy, fancy beat of him, like a very, how do I call it? Um, a bit of a whimsical little dream. I saw myself on a, on a Hurley Davidson on the on Grand Canyon, <laughs> you know, going like that. It was a dream I still have to do, you know. And uh, he laughed. He goes like, you know, said, you know what? God operates in mysterious ways. And he told me a story of the same woman in Burundi who has been trying to leave the country for years because I'm sure uh, there's certain spirits that can't rest. They want to just break out. And people who know spirituality in terms of chakras, uh, she had a problem with her throat. So for me, I understood much later there was expression and she had this uh, tropical disease somehow, nobody could fix it. And doctors in Paris were interested. She was always wanted to go to Paris, to France, whatever. And so she, she developed that, they couldn't fix her, it was deadly. And then doctors, they say, you know, we're interested in that disease. Send her to us, we're gonna, you know, look into it. And while she was there, the doctor said, it's gonna take some time. What would you like to do while you're here? Say, oh, I've always wanted to study here. And that's how she found herself in Paris, you know? And she, the, doc, the priest looked at me and goes, you see, just trust. So when I saw her I was in the AC, I was like, wow. <laughs> so there it is. So. AP, thank you so much. Um, it's, um, I think it just reminds me of just, you know, the power of storytelling and how, you know, it's incredible to hear that experience and um you know how i think that it's one of the things that's so incredible about ac is that um you know it does bring together so many different stories that we get to share with one another which is hopefully um what we can explore a bit more um in this session um let me just turn to the our student um directors and editors and producers um would you mind just doing a quick run through and just saying hi and tell us tell us where you're you know you tell us where you're from and uh, and anything else. So um, who's first up? Maybe um, who do I see there? Um, maybe um, Jenna or Jojo Wood. Can, do you want to just say say hi and? Hi, I'm Jenna. I'm from England and Taiwan, and I'm currently in England, and I'm working on the 2000s part of the documentary. Brilliant. Um, I'm Jojo. I'm from the UK, and I'm currently in London, and I'm working on the 90s decade. Who else do we have? Step forwards. Don't be shy. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ailey. Uh, I'm from Botswana, UK in Italy, and I'm in Rome right now, and I'm doing the 1970s bit. Hello, my name is Odin. I'm from uh, Norway, and uh, uh, yeah, I do, I'm doing the 2010s. Hi, my name is Kafora. I am from Kenya, and I am doing the 2000 bit along with Jenna. Hi, my name is Jacopo. I'm from Italy and I'm proudly doing the 60s. Hi, I am Alessandro. I'm also from Italy and I'm doing the 1980s. Hello, I'm Naren from Belgium, Algeria and France and I'm doing the 1970s. Hi, I'm Sheva. I'm from Tunisia and uh, I'm living in the UAE. I'm doing the 1980s. Um, hi, I'm Emma, I'm French, and I'm doing the 1980s as well. Um, hi, I'm Ella, I'm from Wales, and I'm doing the 1960s. Hi, I'm Gerhard, I'm a fellow student of Ulrich, and we were close friends, and we're still close friends, and we have a lot of contacts over the years, and uh, I admired his career. Uh, a cosmopolitan career, <laughs> returning to the German province, but still, uh, Atlantic College had a tremendous impact on me in, in these two years. 
between 66 and 68. Very good. I'm, I'm pleased that you're going to be you'll be able to fact check what Ulrich says. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Um, who else do we have on the? Have, have all the students said hi, first of all? Um, hi, I'm Xing Yao. I'm actually one of the lighthouse keepers with Karin. We're not history students, but we're just curious and wanted yeah. to listen. Yeah, Great. I'm Karin, and I'm also a lighthouse keeper, and I'm here to listen to the stories. Great. Um, Francois isn't here, who, um, but maybe when he joins, he can he'll be able to sort of he can introduce himself and tell us a bit about the lighthouse. Um, and then I'm delighted to say we've got our two um, alum filmmakers with us who are going to be helping guide um, the students in the questions and um, and the, the film production. Um, so hi, Chloe and Harry. Do you want to just say introduce yourselves and say hi? I can say hello. Uh, I'm Chloe. Uh, I was at Atlantic College 2001 to 2003 and yeah very excited to hear all these different experiences. What everyone said so far has been really exciting to hear so yeah it's a great project. And hello I'm Harry. Um, I was at college 97 to 99. I'm from Wales uh, based in London these days where I make films. Great. Um, well, thanks everyone. Um, I'm really um, excited for this. Um, this the, thanks students, um, you put together such a great list of questions. Um, I'm, you know, I think what we're gonna, I think we should sort of s jump in. Harry and Chloe, you have a, did you have a chance to look over their questions? They seem to sort of flow, flow naturally. And I think um, we'll just, it, why don't we just do them in the order in which they appear in the spreadsheet, which I think is, um, which I think is largely uh, alphabetical. Um, does that, um, if that makes sense to everyone? And I think I would encourage the students, you know, to um, one of the challenges of conducting interviews is both allowing your interviewee the chance to explore their memories but also knowing when to um when to step in if they seem to be seem to be straying they will appreciate the interviewee will appreciate it themselves because um you know but what we want is to find a way to you know delve into experience with you know with a purpose your questions are great a great way a great openings f for that but um just it, use your instincts as to when you think it's time to to step in, and um, JP and Ulrich won't be at all won't be at all offended, um, I'm sure, and um, that will help us sort of push push them to really extract the good the good stuff that I know <laughs> that I know they've been uh, thinking about how to share. So um, with that in mind, just you know, if you have a follow up question, you know, don't feel tied to the questions that you came up with especially if we you know we end up talking about a very specific incident and um i think um for those who are not student questioners um if you you know as when you as you hear things if, as you have questions um put put them in the chat box um and at the end after the students finish let's ha you know if there are additional questions we want to put to Ulrich and, and JP, um, let's let's do that. Um, this session is going to be recorded, and you know the aim is that we'll take away um, take away these you know the interview, and then it will get sort of chopped and packaged into into the documentary. So um, hopefully that makes sense to everyone. Is everyone everyone can see the chat function right and knows how to. Use it, yeah. I see everyone's been chiming away. That's great, um, and yeah. So I think with that, that all said, um, let's um, let's maybe start off. I think the, the first questions I see, um, uh, Jacopo uh, Copo, 
Um, you're first on the list. I, um, are you comfortable leading off with a question? Um, we're going to start with Ulrich, by the way, and then transition to to JP. So, um, yeah. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, so we work together on some question and we wanted to start off with the very first question with the very first thing uh, you remember from your experience. So um, do you remember your first day at AC? If yes, um, um, what was that like? Who did you meet? Um, did you have expectation and reaction, especially um, since you were actually um, among the very first um, students in AC? Thank you. Uh, yeah, I was uh, uh, not actually the first. I think that was the third or fourth intake. So uh, it was founded in 62. I came in 66. Um, I, I think when these questions, I've, I, I've seen some of them, is they're a little bit in the frame of mind of what you think AC is now. I think AC at that time was everything but what it is now. Mm -hmm. It was racially homogeneous predominantly an Anglo-Saxon. I don't think there was a single Italian. You know? There were lots of um, uh, kids of very rich uh, backgrounds. Rick Ivan Opel, you know, everybody drives an Opel. And, <laughs> and there were adventurers you know, who didn't give a damn, you know, who probably fired the whole thing. And that there were very good teachers. That's probably the same as it is now. Excellent teachers. You know? And there were leaders and headmasters who, who actually grew with the, what's it called? Uh, they grew, they changed. Uh, we were founded by a military man, uh, was led, an admiral, uh, who was uh, a very generous person, very generous, uh, but uh, he never talked about the war, even though he, he, he was on Edward V, a battleship on, on the Atlantic, uh, Arctic thing. He must have been through terrible things, yeah, but he never talked about it. So, I think <laughs> to my first time in college was, first of all, there was a national committee. I did not come in through the national committee. So I shouldn't have been there. Huh? Why was I there anyway? My father wasn't that rich, not really. But it's, uh, it's because Kurt Hahn sent me there. Kurt Hahn uh, has those, uh, actually, you know, good, dear old Kurt has not written a lot. And even o uh, uh, Sutcliffe didn't manage to put a real book together about him because Kurt never wrote. Huh? He just acted. Yeah? He was trying to save the, uh, the empire in Germany at the end of uh, World War I. He really did. Huh? He wanted to push Prince Max von Baden into the, to jump into the boots of the Kaiser. He refused, so we had the Republic. And then he's, he founded Salem, uh, which was his first Hanian uh, uh, school uh, in Germany with girls. Mm -hmm. Then he, of course, he, got, he was uh, from a very rich uh, Jewish industrial dynasty. He got into conflict with Hitler because he wrote a, a, a letter to Hitler condemning the murder of a young communist in front of his mother. Uh, as we had to flee and uh, escape annihilation. What did he, he was very anglophile, so he went to the UK, for, and the next thing he did was found another school called Gordonston. Mm -hmm. I think Prince Charles was unhappy enough to, <laughs> enough <laughs> to attend there. <laughs> and, and, and then actually, uh, and, and then when I was there for a few months, I came back and then he told me, uh, uh, I can't send you home, you go to Atlantic College. I know you are late, it's October, they started in September, or earlier, I will send a letter to the uh, admiral and you'll be there. Pack your case, you'll be fine. <laughs> that's, that's the last thing I heard from him. <laughs> and the first, and it, 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 I was indeed fine, but of course I was late. So when you come uh, into the Atlantic College uh, dining room, everybody was already, already sitting with their group and this and that. It wasn't so comfortable because I'm, I'm a bit of a shy guy. May, may not sound like it, but I am, in fact. <laughs> so <laughs> it was difficult to adjust. <laughs> and the first very gracious person to receive me there was a Greek called um, Basil Kuvaritakis. I think he's now a professor of maths in Oxford. <laughs> he showed me around. <laughs> 
he got me to Braden Stock Hall. He looked at the he pointed at the lectern and said, "There, you will have one day. You will have to address all schools." I said, "Oh my God!" <laughs> <laughs> so, I think it was my first conversation, and it was late at night, and it was foggy, and we heard uh, the foghorn. I think it's now no longer they do it always GPS and things, but at that time there was fog. There was a horn all night long. Yeah. Uh, uh, does it answer your question? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm too long. <laughs> no, yes, uh, thank you very much for this very insightful um, response. And I'm very sorry that you didn't have any Italians at the time. <laughs> I'm very sorry that you didn't have Italians at the time. <laughs> no, uh, we didn't. Uh, uh, Gerhard, correct me, but I don't think we did. Uh, no Italians, no Spanish, no African, hmm. <laughs> no Bame. Nothing. I don't know why we were, we were certainly not diverse. Yeah. Well, sorry, that's, that's that's really important to come visit. An important thing is what you didn't mention. There were only one girl, a Posey Pearson, the son of the daughter of the, of the, of the bursar. And so really it was an all male society. And this of course had a tremendous uh, impact on, on, on all, all of us. There was some sort of, uh, well, um, it, it was very male and it was very sort of sporty and uh, I think the academic part didn't play that important part uh, as it does now with the IB. Uh, the, 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 the English A-level system at that time left much more time for sports and activities in the afternoon. It was much more liberal and uh, as I've heard from, uh, uh, from, from, from the, the, the director, uh, last time I attended the college, now you are a bit under the pressure of the academic uh, syllabus and uh, we, had, we had much more freedom at that time. Mm. Mm. All right. Um, thanks very much, Jaco, uh, Jacopo. Uh, Mohammed, I'm not sure if Mohammed's on the call, so um, we'll, might, um, correct me if I'm wrong, so we might move straight to Ella May if she's, if she's with us. Uh, hi. Um... Okay. Um, what is your favorite memory of your time at AC? Uh, a, a wonderfully short question. Uh, yes, it was actually uh, 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 our, our, our our three or four of us, uh, Kenneth and, and 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 Gerhard and myself. We we <laughs> some we went to quaint ways. You know that that little thing. Uh, I think it's closed now. It was this uh, tea shop or. Uh, Coffee, no. Landwood Major. In La uh, yeah, Landwood Major to the, to the beach. That was a nice place to be. And then I think the other thing was uh, we, you know, uh, when Peter Howe talked about uh, the other day about, uh, you know, the breathalyzers and, uh, and, and, and the door checks and the, uh, the raid parties that checked whether uh, there were AC loiterers in Mark Cross or in Landwood. Um, I think uh, our housemasters uh, put confidence in us. I mean, you're old enough, you know, when you need to sleep. And so, I mean, uh, okay, uh, they didn't want to have drunk students because you had to be ready at any time to jump in one of those boats and, <laughs> and save lives. So you couldn't be drunk. <laughs> so in that respect, we had, uh, we had a lot of freedom. And sometimes we were so much engrossed in, in discussion that we didn't go to sleep. At that place, which is now the art center, at the bottom, there were, there were small little classrooms, and we spent the night there discussing back and forth. And then uh, we spent the uh, morning hours uh, to avoid how to avoid going to morning swim, which is a barbarian, uh, which uh, disappeared when the girls came. And, and, and then we went to breakfast. So there were many happy moments. And I think that the, <laughs> I, I, I'm not a sportsman. I like the academic part very much for some reason. I mean, the history teachers would come, dump a pile of books and say, you know, an essay by what, in a week's time? Well, you know, more material to discuss. Uh, and you read this book, you read that, we put together a, an essay that we claim uh, was individually written. So I think, uh, yeah, there were many happy moments not necessarily healthy but happy 
Um, how did you, um, just a follow -up, quick follow-up question, how did you avoid the morning swim, Ulrich? What was the best ruse? <laughs> no chance. Well, you no know, you, you, you put on your, uh, your, 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 your whatever, the sports gear, and then uh, you had to make sure that your hair was wet. Because the admiral at times, and it was quite unpredictable, he stood at the door, uh, entrance to, uh, to the college when you came up the stairs. And if somebody, uh, one of the boys came and, you know, he thought the hair was not wet, he put the hand on the head and said, look, I think go down there and do what you forgot to do. <laughs> so you yeah, had to do your swim. And you know, in October, the water was, 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 was steaming. It wasn't really heated, but it was warm enough to generate steam. So it was a tough, tough uh, uh, puppy school type of uh, drill uh, of Hans, of court Hans uh, making. Yeah. So that's all gone, dear friends. Uh, I think with the, <laughs> with the 90s, 80s even, that is gone. Uh, good riddance. <laughs> Um, Kate, Katie just had the, um, um, who's um, my co-organizer, um, um, had this lovely suggestion of maybe we should put the same question simultaneously to, to JP as Ulrich, because I think it might be really interesting just to have the, have a, have the contrast. So um, I, Ulrich, if, if you're comfortable with that and JP, then, then maybe um, we can sort of, that might make some editing challenges uh, down, down the line, but um, um, it, Chloe and Harry, does that, would that be? Do you think that makes sense? Uh, yeah, I think I can go for it. Sounds good. All right. So, um, so maybe um, Jacopo and LMA, you can just put put fire those questions to JP, and then or then we'll sort of do have everyone. We'll do a switch backwards and forwards. First question was uh, first memory in AT. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I think the first memory I remember was that um, there's a backdrop to it how I left Kenya in the first place. It's a long story. <laughs> um, first, I didn't have the right to leave um, Nairobi because that's where I got uh, when I got transferred there. I didn't have to write to leave Kenya because I was in hospital, which I haven't paid the bill, first of all. <laughs> but I managed to leave. There were some political things, uh, you know, home. There was a, a war going on, so the embassy was involved in stopping those, stopping these ones. But in a way, I remember being in a, in a plane, and I, I had two girls I came with because we, uh, we selected along a few hundreds of people. But we three girls coming to AC. If you remember, is it Mireille, Mireille and Aurore? And I, I remember they giving me responsibility that I've been a bit of father of them, which has been a joke all the time I was in AC. I was like, talk to dad, talk to father. Father said what? And um, it was a joke between us at the campus. And, uh, and I remember when we arrived to the airport, we got picked up with, uh, because my scholarship was a combination with uh, the Hugh Pilkington Trust, which is based in Oxford. And, uh, and one of the trustees came uh, and took us to the train station, three of us. And, and I said, someone will meet you to the other end. This is your destination. You know, we don't speak English. Uh, our English is very broken. So that's we came early to, to do intense uh, English classes, right? All the non-English -speak speaking countries. And, uh, and and I remember the first shock I got um, on the train was that the train, because in our country where we come from, and uh, when you look at the population, you see a lot more a younger generation. You don't see older generation. So on the train, I was like, where are the young people? Because it was a much older population. <laughs> this felt, it was quite like, wow, this is quite uh, a, a shock. And I remember arriving at, um, was the, is it Bari, the train station, you know? And I got picked up with my economics teacher who became my economics teacher, uh, Aaron Ripley, and uh, taking our bags to get in. And uh, he goes to me, where are your bags? 
literally I had a little bag like that <laughs> coming to you. And he goes like, why are your bags? It's like, this is it. He's like, oh, you're a light traveler. I was like, maybe. <laughs> so I remember arriving uh, at um, our house, explaining, because we didn't understand much, you know, as all these and that. So we're just, we're just happy to just get out, you know, and just whatever is out there waiting for us, we'll meet with it, we'll deal with it, you know. So I remember arriving, uh, um, what's his name? He's an artist, he was our second year, German, really tall. Um, I forgot his name, I remember. He came, oh, yeah. huh? Or oh, second year. So I remember I came in, our house parents became um, the Silkstons. You know? Ray Silkstons comes in, we, who have, kept in touch and become my family really he became not only my history teacher he became my really confident my uh, really, how to say all kinds of things you can imagine and became close to his children now and and i remember being uh, welcomed in the sixton house and i'm like that's it I say yeah that's it and they all laughed i said you don't have all. i said no i was like literally a few couple of clothes or something because i was coming from the hospital anyway so in time i was in hospital i was just in the hospital clothes so this time i got a scholarship so it's like okay let's grab grab something you can go with you know so and i remember uh, and i said okay since because i was not brought by a, a family or anything it was just the scholarship so I remember Rex Sixth and go like, uh, I think we need to buy a few things for you <laughs> because it looks like you got nothing, you know. So I remember soon as, after, right after that, I got accompanied to to go to Chlantwit, you know, go look for toothbrush, soaps, uh, all kinds of things uh, that I could use for functioning on the day, you know. And I remember for me, I was like, we it's sort of like in sort of a, I, I could feel the peace because I've been looking for, like, you know, I think I'm safe here. <laughs> you know, I am safe here. Um, I think that's, that's the first, the first word that sticks with me was the light traveler, which I've kept in my head. So I think that's the first memory I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there was another second question was. Yeah, LMA, do you want to put uh, JP your, your question or a yeah, version of it? Second question was, what's your favorite memory at AC? Favorite. Wow, favorite. There's so many. It's very hard to pick up. For me, it's a general sensation uh, that I have all these people from over the world. You know, um, I have to say, I I love dancing, as most people know. You know, I mean, do music now, but it all started from dancing. I love the cool weight to get to the sosh, <laughs> you know? And when they come to close, they will go back to our rooms. I'm like, ah, damn it, you know? Uh, and it was, it was a place of uh, expression for me, I think, you know, to dance, you know, come out of your shell, you know? And they will be dancing all kinds of music, you know? Everyone will have their own turn on the, you know, on the deck and stuff like that. And um, that was, yeah, that was the, the biggest for me, um, yeah, a lot of that, yeah. That's the best memory I can say. And also maybe the, the teacher, uh, who's the librarian? Um, she was the wife of the vice, you know, yeah, it was the Dean. Regina Glover, was it? That's it, his wife. So his wife, I remember being in the library going around and trying to find history and stuff like that. I kind of mentioned like something like uh, there's no African history or something about, uh, you know, we don't have the past or something. She just stood right there and looked at me and said, listen, young man, there is a huge history and wealth, you know? And I remember she was like, wow. You know, like basically what she did, she pointed me in a direction basically, you know? And, uh, and since then, because I look to the education we have in Africa, it's not critical thinking at all. We have in French a word, we call it, um, and the way we study, it's called rendez-moi mais note. Do you understand? 
the teacher gives you what he teaches, and when the exam comes, you just have to give them exactly what they taught you. There's no, <laughs> there's no room to it, you know? And you don't have to be critical, you know? And uh, at that point in the direction, and I knew even AC, there was in a class, you know, where we're studying, where we choose, uh, you know, he was quite in a certain sort of guided in a way. And I used to spend a lot of time in, uh, I, I, somehow I got the keys to go in the history department. You know, you know, illegally or somehow, I don't know how I knew where to find those keys. I would spend a lot of afternoons uh, locked, you know, in, in the history class and I could pull out those, uh, that TV set because there was a TV in the cupboard locked up the keys and a lot of cassette underneath. So I'll get the keys and sit in there and I locked all the freedom fighters of African history and stuff like that. And, but it was not taught during class, you know? So yeah, things like that, things like that. Yeah. yeah. Adam, do you have do you have a follow up question for for um, JP? Do you want to explore anything he said? Um, or or and or I, I noticed you got an, you had an interesting second question on your on your list. Um. Yeah. Just kind of what was your least favorite memory? Kind of in contrast to that, because I think it's kind of everything people hear about AC is always so positive and but mm. obviously we've all lived through it and there are bad yeah. times along with the really great things so I think it would be interesting to hear about that. Should we put, should we put, the, put that to Ulrich maybe? Ulrich what's your... Um... What, what was the gist of the question you fell off towards the um, What was your, le what's your least favourite memory of AC? Least favourite? Ah, that's easy to say. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> uh, is it easy? Yeah, it's, it's I think the, 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 the division in the college between the physical guys and between the guys who were not so physical, between the, those who, uh, who ran around in the, uh, what's that called, in the wetsuit all the time, were mostly of North American and uh, Scandinavian origin, or German, and then those who, and the rest, uh, who did social service, <laughs> <laughs> or who tried to avoid this damn cliff rescue as much as he could because I thought it was dangerous and the stuff that we were dealing with was rusty. So uh, <laughs> that about is my, is my, is, is uh, yeah. Mm. Um, JP, how about you? Um, the list, uh, yeah, actually there was that sort of uh, people had, a certain pattern of clicks, you know, on, on the campus, you know, and I'm, I'm glad that I never fell into any clicks <laughs> because I had uh, like uh, Harry, Harry Grace, his, his older brother is Will Grace, he's my best man and uh, I was his best man at his wedding, he was best man to my wedding. And uh, I remember him come to a wedding and said that part, particular thing, you know, it goes like the thing about JP, which I never thought, it was not a conscience, you know, it's a no conscience way of thinking. And uh, he said something that was like, oh, oh, okay. He said something, uh, you know, AC, you have people in the cliques, the, you know, the Europeans, the Scandinavian, the Latinos, the Africans, or in a service or whatever they do, you know. And uh, I remember well that I, I, I still, until today, I don't like clicks because I know the danger of it where I come from, you know. And uh, I, in, 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 when I left, you know, and I think still today, uh, especially even in the Burundian community sometimes, when I'm expressing with this problem there, they're trying to figure out where I stand on the line of ethnics or class or whatever. And you can see battling in their head because... Uh, that's where we fall apart, you know. So in AC, I, I, I knew there were cliques, you know, uh, in the way they sat the, even in the, in the dining room, you know, and all sort of stuff. And, um, and okay, there'll be some characters. <laughs> There's some characters with some entitlement, you know, and... Um, which which grade some key people have this sort of 
entitlement sort of attitude much later. Some of them are friends and we talked about it, you know, they were like, you know, I'm sorry, I, I just have no clue what's going on. So it's good to know that we, we are in this circle somehow, it's like, it's safe to have to evolve and, because I think that's the whole point, you know? If I think about the whole education of our Trinity College, taking people from other places and stuff, trying to give a total experience or expose them to something, you know? Uh, for them to have a, an opportunity to align to something that is greater than ourselves, that is for, for the rest, you know? That's how I always seen it, you know, and still do. And um, so, and it's good that certain people, and actually two days ago, one person, we had a really bad fallout. <laughs> and I just saw him on social media, trying to link up. And, um, and that really, really triggered me. That was a really bad thing that, um, I have never felt violent or anybody. And I only almost went there because there was, I think, to put it in a, way, a bratty way or somehow, you know. And, uh, and I remember my house part get involved and all that stuff, you know. And I remember going there, because he hasn't really fig, you know, figured out what's wrong with it. But I can see now what he's doing. It's like, wow. You know, you have to have faith. Change is always possible. So, and that's the whole point of this uh, education. Where we we got the honor and uh, and privilege to be part of. I still I still hold it till today. It's a huge, huge privilege. Um, no matter which way you look at it, you know there are problematics. You know, uh, and and change is not easy. You know, you just have to look at the history. And yes, yeah, so a friend, it's a child of my friend. They came over. I have, a, I have a few friends over. I'm coming down the stairs. Two seconds. Why are you talking? Mm -hmm. He's very, he looks uh, sweetheart. So. Yeah. Um, El, El May, did you uh, do you have any follow ups that um, anything that you would like to push JP or Ulrich on or explore further? Um. No, I think that's everything. I think we, I just want to say, I think we can, like, even now, I think we can all definitely relate to the click aspect of AC. And I think it was interesting to hear that it kind of, it's kind of existed all the way through the time in AC. But, um, and that, I think a part of the education is probably trying to break through that. So yeah. Great. Well, thanks, Elame. I think um, Noran, um, you've got some some very interesting looking questions. Do you want to put put them to Ulrich? Yes. Hello. Um, I was wondering, in what way did your UWC experience change the way you see the world today? It's a very cute question. <laughs> in what way? Uh, I think it changed, it changed everything. Uh, it kind of closed, closed the door uh, on, on a life uh, that I was supposed to have from the terms of family and from the terms of, of, of culture. And uh, it, it opened, uh, actually, <clears throat> when, when I left uh, AC with my, with my A-level in history, physics, don't laugh at the combination, but that is a German requirement. The Germans are particular, and to this day, they're very particular. So I had to do a science, <laughs> physics, history, uh, and, and, and of course, uh, history. We did the first uh, African history course. Forever grateful to uh, Stuart Nichols, uh, who is uh, who's no longer amongst us, uh, who really influences, and I very often think of him. Uh, it, was, it was difficult to adjust. Uh, to university life, because there was no, no internationalism. There was no, no, no uh, a perception, yeah, of colonialism, imperialism, internationalism. It, it wasn't there at the university. So naturally, you had to gravitate towards uh, uh, groups that actually um, uh, were dealing with this type of thing and were addressing it and militating. And uh, it's not so easy to find this when you do engineering. So I, I did make a compromise with the family by studying engineering, but uh, I, in hindsight, I find it very practical because uh, it gives me a, a kind of an engineering grip on reality, which helped me in many stages of my life. 
So even though I never worked as an engineer. So I, I think it, it influenced, uh, it just made close the door uh, mm. on the so-called normal life. And uh, yeah, it sent me out there on orbit. And then, uh, <laughs> well, then it's easier to come back when you're old as I am. And it influenced me in, in the sense that my, uh, I have three of my kids uh, went to uh, colleges. I think, uh, JP, you might remember my daughter, Rosa. <laughs> we, met, we met in Trieste, me and you. Yes, that's right. And uh, she went to AC. And uh, that's another of the taboos I broke because uh, you, uh, JP, oh uh, no, AC, uh, students are not supposed to send their kids to AC. Uh, to other colleges. Huh? That mm -hmm. is, uh, oh, Sutcliffe was very firm about that. You know, mm -hmm. no old boys, no relations, but you know, what can you do? Huh? <laughs> so, mm -hmm. want to go themselves. So, I think it changed, it changed my life profoundly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. uh, the same question? Yeah, Nora, do you want to put that question to JP or? Uh, yes, so um, in what way did your UWC experience change the way you see the world today? Um, I think for me what it has done, because through that cry, getting out Burundi, feeling like I was living between four walls, right? And in face of nobody giving me the same signals and coming to AC, see the potential of it, see that it's palpable somewhere, you know, however, you know, um, it kept me something in me that um, uh, there's a possibility, you know, it's utopia, however it is, it is a possibility. You can dream and stay dreaming because in the way it's set up, in the way it is, as, you know, you could see um, among all the problematics, you know, there is that line that sort of almost like that light in that tunnel that people want to touch to get to, you know. And uh, it kind of gave me confirmed and uh, give this what I, I can call it a quiet confidence, you know, because I can find myself in all kinds of groups and you can hear their views and you could see where they're lacking in not having been exposed to this. Basically, it's widened my perspective, basically, you know. So, and every time I'm in any group of people, somehow you can hear how they say, ah, you're too. They always dismiss, you know, they say, ah, you're dreaming, you're doing this and that, you know. And, um, but later, no, they, like, you can see people want to believe that it's possible, but they don't have where it is. But it's like we had a little sort of a look in what could be possible, you know. And, uh, and that, for me, that for me is most important, you know. That's most important that I find myself carrying it everywhere. You know, and uh, and and it, I, I don't get popular from certain people. <laughs> they think I'm. I become very frustrating because it's a, it's a sheer belief. It's a sheer hope. You know, and so it, it annoys a lot of people because they want to be right now. Okay, it's us against those ones. Let's do this. I said, no, no, no. Just take your time. You know, and the building, as some people say, to to destroy it takes one second. To build, it takes generations. You know. <laughs> Uh, it's like the lighthouse, you know, how they not see, you know. So it, it is very hard uh, to be surrounded with people with no perspective like you've had, you've been exposed to. It's almost you have a duty, <laughs> you know, and you can have to have a certain grace to walk with it. So uh, it's, not, uh, it's not an easy package we've got, really. <laughs> yeah. Nor Noran, you've got a nice um, sort of succinct question about three three words you want to put that to both our both of our sorry i want to say my son is leaving i've been trying to get him to ac he's he came and visited and he was like i don't think i'll go there <laughs> say hello hello <laughs> okay all right see you later. All right. All right. sorry about this teenagers <laughs> yeah. um what are the that define the best time at ac Sorry, could, could you say that again, um, Noran? Oh, yeah, sorry. So, um, what are the three words that define the best your time at AC? 
For me, yeah. <laughs> uh, three words. Dream, faith, patience. That's what comes in my head. Okay. Thanks, Jeffy. That's nice. Um, Ulrich, should we switch that over to him? Um, Ulrich, um, what are the three words that define the best your time at AC? Do you want to pick up with JP your um, your your question? Is that yeah. maybe um, maybe um, feels like we might have already gone over that um, the first one, right? On um, remembering your first conversation, it sounds like I love JP's memory of that. Do you want to do you want to ask one of your follow up questions? Uh, yeah, sure. So, um, I was wondering, when you look back at AC, what sort of feeling do you associate with your experience and why? Um, the feeling I've got is sometimes, I feel like uh, with the experience of AC, um, which when I was in Trieste, I kind of saw it a little bit. And I had a little reflection with that in a few words that uh, it's like there is a huge, huge bank of uh, abilities, skills, reach um, to impact change, you know. And I know everyone is busy in the, whatever they are doing, you know, but something that connect people on the same dreams, you know? And unfortunately, sometimes when I see what gets organized, I always feel like it's very corporate. It's a bit networking-y, uh, help each other to get to the project where whatever they are doing, you know? And uh, I think if we stayed uh, um, sort of organic, sort of the way we were on the campus, you know? You know? And dreaming, um, you know, it, it, it can make a huge impact, you know. But I feel like I call it a dormant potential, <laughs> you know, a dormant potential. And, uh, and, I, and I know that people, when we do reunion, you can always have this feeling, people, you know, they're sitting there uneasy, so, uh, why are we here? Uh, what do we do? I know it's great, uh, to reminisce and, you know, it's like some people almost like they're waiting what to latch on, you know, to to use that potential fire that is existent when you come and dreaming at a, a young age, you know, and the, and, the, and the fear is that some people after it, and there's some people who fell off the wagon or fell off the line uh, because they felt like oh I thought it was a nice dream and now okay everyone is up to their own let's just go with it you know. And that's a waste. I mean, because uh, 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 it's a missing an opportunity, you know. And uh, and also the other thing is the pressure. I always felt that you've got to have a big position. You got to be this and that. You know, we have so many pieces of the puzzle. You know, and we have our individuality. You know, people want to do in a big style. People want to do in a very minute way. People want to do it in a very, you know, people want to do that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, leadership is not being in the front only, <laughs> you know, and because it's about leadership. Um, you can be present in the front, can be in the back, left, side, in the center, present, absent, but knowing that you are tucked into something that is, um, that connects. The only word I remember when I see is, uh, celebrate the differences, it's the richness of this world, you know? I remember that, you know? And I think, um, I still have it, I still have me, because um, I look when I do music and traveling, and I can see the differences between different artists with different backgrounds, you know? 
perspectives and oh, people always feel, why do I feel so easily like I've already known you before? You know, that is, the, you know, this experience works on so many levels. You know, it's not as intellectuals, you know, or do these uh, people who are very spiritual, people who are people, people and stuff like that. So we, we have to put that all in, um, because when I was in Trieste, Woolwich, that's where he was, uh, I remember having a sitting down one in, in Italy, and there was this uh, Trinity College board meeting up. It just felt like too corporate, you know, too sort of uh, rubbing shoulder with such and such, because you have to be such. And, I just felt like death of this beautiful feeling that we have of AC, of a Trinity College, and the whole network. And I remember him mentioning that and go like, this is not it. So it's beautiful to see him here today, still on, on the same, you know. I, I, I didn't know it was him actually coming today. And, um, and uh, there was Palem, who was, uh, I think he was conflict resolution teacher sometime, now he's an India um, master. And I remember him mentioning the same things, like there's something special that we might lose because what you saw is all the, young people coming through it's almost very careeristic and you know not the dream because what i understand at Trinity college is about bringing the world together and offer them a possibility of what could be you know and to see that and dream you know beyond borders you know the world to be people rivers and mountains you know and uh you can dream that high. If you fall in the middle, it's good, still good, you know? And someone who on that middle can dream even higher, probably they'll hit it. And we don't have to feel like it has to be in our lifetime, <laughs> but we just leave it as a seed. That's what I understand, we are seeds, so. Um, I just see that Ulrich's popped back. Um, Ulrich, we've got a, um, Noran has got a tough question for you, just to get you straight back in, into it again. Noran, do you want to put your question to Ulrich? Um, yes, so my question is, what are the three words that define best your time at AC? Three words? Yes. Um, I think uh, it's uh, um, pirates. Uh, yeah, I mean pirates, you know, in the Caribbean, not in the Caribbean, but pirates. And then um, quest, quests, a quest for, like we know in uh, the never ending story goes on a quest. And uh, comradeship or friendship. That's really nice. Um, but um, Noran, do you have a follow up question? Um. Yes, that's like more general. It's um, what role did AC play in the choice of your career? Uh, what role it played? Yeah. If it well, it was uh, more like underneath. Sometimes I didn't realize it played a role, but it, it certainly did. And then uh, to become more concrete, <laughs> I very often got in a pickle and you know, Lo and behold, it was AC, other uh, uh, AC uh, folks that, uh, that saved my ass. Huh? Uh, I had a boss in my department uh, uh, in the Director General for, uh, suite uh, who, who kind of uh, yeah, uh, helped me out. I had a, a boss, a Portuguese in my uh, department the lower department who also helped me out, even though he was angry. <laughs> wrote some mails and I said, you can't write that. But anyway, <laughs> I survived that. And then I had um, another thing. Yeah, a similar thing happened in, in, in China when there was a, uh, I had my ambassador who, 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 who helped me out because he said, uh, I agree, but it's still a diplomatic incident. I agree, but don't worry. I'm here to fix it. That's my job. So I think it, it helped. Huh? And uh, some of you guys may <laughs> make the same observation out there. Once you step out, you find, you find somebody uh, under the grass or in the open, you know, who is an UWC uh, uh, 
the student X and who, who may understand of what you talk about and why you did something. Um, maybe you could just give a, just, um, I'm not surprised to learn that you were involved in a diplomatic incident, Ulrich. Can you, like, in, in three sentences, can you tell us what that incident was? Uh, it was actually, it was in, uh, it was in, 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 in Indonesia, I was responsible for <clears throat> trying to finish the civil war in the north of Sumatra, Aceh. And there we, um, I was instructed not to negotiate with the rebels <laughs> anymore. And <laughs> three days later, I met the rebel boss and uh, he agreed to negotiations with the help of the humanitarian uh, Henri Dunant Foundation. And in fact, uh, it, uh, a ceasefire that was actually undermined by the government uh, was revived and maybe some people didn't die because of that. But then what, what can you do? Uh, yeah, that was one. There's another one, but I think that's enough. Mm. That's, that's really powerful, Rick. Thank, thanks for sharing that. And I, I, sorry, I've just got to ask you, what, what's with the pirates? <laughs> why is that your, what, why is that your, uh, your, your word, AC? Because, uh, you know, we were a really a motley bunch and some simply were behaved like pirates, you know. <laughs> they got drunk, they were violent and they uh, abused you. I'm going to kill you. Yeah, things like that. <laughs> So it, it was a feature of our lot. Uh, Gerhard may think I exaggerate, but actually I don't, do I, Gerhard? <laughs> that we had these outliers, you know, uh, the, uh, whether they be the sons of a ship owner, you know, uh, these, uh, I don't want to mention the nationality, or a son of a, of a, of a, of, of, of a, a, Castilian, a Castilian bull farm, which, reached far further than your eye could reach or this like they did what they wanted to do <laughs> and you had to try to you know coexist so uh, that's why sometimes I felt I had my deal my share of pirates <laughs> all right thanks for sharing that so um, I think who's up next on the student questioners on our list Is it, um, is it Alessandro, is that? Oh yeah, <laughs> my, my question is, so AC has changed through these years. So if you could name one thing that you would like to see in AC now, and one thing that you wouldn't like to see in AC now, what would it be? Uh, is it, shall I answer, CP? Will you, JP? Please, please start. Uh, one, one, one thing I wouldn't, I'd not like to see is that the, the pressure uh, under which, uh, the academic pressure under which the students uh, uh, choke, uh, and uh, I had, uh, I mean, whenever we had during last year's uh, alumni meet, uh, I thought some of the students were so depressed, you know, sitting, looking at their lunch and then, you know, these bulges of books trying to prepare. And I think it was just, it was just too much you know, of the rote learning and the idiotic books they have. If you look in, a, in an economics book in, 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 of the IB program, it's theology, it's lies, it's mythology. That's one thing. And then, so I think we need to do something about that. We need to liberate the spirits uh, mm -hmm. from this Western uh, road learning. And then uh, this fear that some of the students, especially from the, from the countries uh, that are far away, uh, get, uh, need, need to, uh, are worried not, not to get a scholarship in the U.S. because uh, the U.S. billionaires are sucking up every the, in the ranks of the students uh, 
sucking them up and sending them to US colleges, which they of course couldn't afford. No living person, very few could afford to pay the fees in the US. Mm. I have one example and then I shut up. A friend of my, a good friend of my daughter who went to Duino, he's, he's from Bangladesh. He got to a good university and then, you know, he found himself practically forced to work on a military contract uh, to, 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 to uh, the university's Brown University. And he said, look, if you want to continue here with your scholarship, you know how much it is, you better work with Professor So-and-so. He is, he is uh, researching on armor and, you know, uh, resistant armor. That means armor of vehicles is not pierced by, uh, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about. This is, I think, this is the two things that I really, I really feel, feel strongly about. Mm. And what and and um, Ulrich, from your time, what would you not want to bequeath to the current students? What was the one ritual or the one thing from sixty six that um, that you're pleased uh, to have seen the back of? But you know, I think that has changed now. Yeah, is this glorification of physical prowess? We didn't have one single handicapped person. We, we, we had all these fit guys, yeah, but not so fit. And uh, so I think simple enough, yeah, uh, you know, this glorification of this uh, physicalism, <laughs> what shall we call it? Almost fascistic. <laughs> um, okay, JP, over to you. Um. I remember times we used to do, I don't remember if it was International Day or, or something like that. We used to have like uh, workshops where we go talk about religions, you know, big debates around religions, about politics or areas, uh, various parts of the world that, you know, as you know, they will have a lot of discussions and uh, they will bring some people from outside who, uh, you know, I remember, is it Hope? There was a, a philosopher guy who came to, you know, I'll never forget him, Hope something. Talk about, you know, uh, internationalism and a human on planet Earth. And, uh, and I'd love that, instead, like he says about academic, for what I've discovered much later, is that people should talk, um, you know, especially when you had a cultural day, you know, it was quite very skimpy, you know, just quickly put the clothes on, do your cultural dance, you have to make it up, and that's gone, you know? And a bit of sniggering here and there, oh, look at this. But I think it's got to be deeper, you know? Again, we are missing the opportunity again, you know? And uh, it's not said that there's no resources or whatsoever. The, the young people want to do it. The young people want to do it. It's just, uh, you know, give them the time and space to do it. The, the young people want to do it. I remember we want to do it and go and it did, but imagine a cultural day, you have Norwegian do their thing, uh, British do their thing, Italian do their thing, then the whole Africa together <laughs> do their thing. I was like, you know, when I think about it, I'm like, the whole Africa would do as one group. I'm like, come on, <laughs> this is, uh, you know, you have to think it through this um, uh, a little bit more, you know, and because if if we are coming forward for this, there have to be depth in this uh, particular things, even take a whole year or whatever, every other day we'll do something, somebody, you know. If it's JP, are you, are you sort of, you're criticizing the International Day because you felt that it wasn't somehow in, inclusive enough, or what's your what are you, what's your? What are I don't you? think it's. I think it's not uh, uh, capitalized on. That it know? was tokenistic. Yeah, in a way, you know, and uh, and, uh, and 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 not you know people talk specific things, and also uh, people from different culture uh, have a different way they talk about things or present themselves something, you know? And if you come from another culture, there'll be maybe a predominant Western way of doing, and everybody has to be forced 
you know, to roll in that, you know, and just keep your other culture where you're doing a bit on the side and people just keep there, you know, uh, quite that way. You know, some people do things like, ooh, you know, let's say in your culture, you know, what are the taboos, what is the, you know, get into it because there's a lot of revealing about people's way of doing it, you know. Uh, then the whole international understanding, <laughs> you know, as the motto right, of the college, can have a little bit, you know, a bit of flesh on the bones, you know. Yeah, I think. All right, thanks, JP. Um, I, um, I, um, did you have? Um, do you want to follow up, Alessandro, or? No, I just wanted to thank you. Uh, thank you very much to both of you. Um, I, Eileen, you've got um, a question that maybe you can push um, JP and Ulrich to come up with a concrete memory. What it... uh, hi. Oh, sorry. My name is pronounced. So don't worry. It's a very common mistake. Um, oh. So my question was like, what did people complain about? Because a lot of people complain. Um, not only at AC, but also the other schools that I've been to. And I was wondering, are the things that um, people complained about with the, when you were there the same things that we complain about? Or, yeah, that's what <laughs> my question. What did people complain about? Really? Well, the answer is very simple. The food. It was horrible. <laughs> you know? It couldn't have been worse uh, in a prison. Brought it up. You guys... Uh, I, the, the reason the, the people from the 10s or 20s, uh, no, we're not yet in the 20s, but you know, uh, later on, I mean, you have, uh, you know, a three course dinner. Uh, it, this, this is fantastic. So our food was really bad. You know? <laughs> but one, we never complained to the cook because it's not his fault and, or, or to the ladies. Who, who served, who handed out the food. Was it, you know? was it the... And the food food also, the that? staff was eating the same, the same uh, terrible fare. Yes. Was, it, was it the quantity? Was it the flavor? Was it the... <laughs> I think it wasn't a question of quantity. It was just greasy. It was spots all the time. And it was this uh, shriveled charm. A bacon that I wouldn't go near now, and uh, in, and you know, the, the I don't know uh, which country are you from? Do you, can you sympathize? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that that was a common complaint, and uh, we actually felt that justified to break into the pantry one day and 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 take a few buckets of ice cream, and I think everybody knew who was doing it, but. Nobody really, you know, pointed the finger. There was just a few buckets of ice cream less, uh, which Gerhard and I and Kenneth enjoyed greatly. <laughs> where, did, where did you eat it, Ulrich? Where did you sneak away to eat it? I think on the, on the tower or on, on the beach side where you have this lighthouse that is actually falling apart. You know, this, not the lighthouse, but these things uh, near, near the uh, seaside you know, there somewhere. <laughs> it was cool enough not to melt. <laughs> <laughs> JP? Things to change. Uh... No, nothing. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, jump in, please. Go on. No, uh, uh, sorry. I thought you said that the question was things to change, but it's things um, that people would complain about whilst you were there. Um, I know sometimes, I don't know, maybe it's, people have to think about it uh, deeply because I, at, at a town, a town college, uh, there will be, I don't know, I don't know how to, there will be, maybe people have means that don't have means, you know, uh, you know, if they have to bear with it, you know, some other people have sort of another life, you know, uh, like if they didn't like the food, you know, they go get their food and shop and bring it and having a, you know, you know, you know uh, they have their own thing going on. Um, as you say, if you, if you, something was fixed at the source, you know, that would be coming thing like, oh, those can, you know, 
they can have their thing because they have money, you know, they can go there on their thing and have somewhere, you know, already just start uh, people pushing around the side, you know. So, yeah, things that kind of push people to just see like, actually, oh, I thought we came here to have the same experience and be on the same sort of, uh, on the same benchmark and, you know, see how it works, you know, because we're understood when we, when we do those, uh, is it one week or two weeks, we go to break and weekend to during the rain and running and eating that horrible food in the rain and no wash, in the, you know, camping and come back to AC and just appreciate those showers. <laughs> you know, that was quite a, something that puts everyone on the same line. All right, we just had a wilderness. Now we'll come back here, start fresh, everyone has different backgrounds. And from that experience for one week in the camping, somehow put everyone on the foot, but it didn't last long, you know, it didn't last long. So if that continue comes there, um, I think more deeper, deeper people to get to, you know, is something after class, is a, 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 some workshop that continual to get into each other, you know, issues of each way when people come from to actually have um, a pretty good idea of each other because we are there for two years, yeah. So people so. would complain about other people not being motivated. Yeah, so okay. structurizing it properly so, doesn't happen so and uh can i ask a follow-up question jack even though jack, I don't have... jack, jack. um so and then a related question do you feel like there was some nostalgia at school um i know that ulrich you were one of the earlier ones and so there was less time from the beginning but like did you feel that there was a sense of of nostalgia of of like oh it was better before and then now um yeah Uh, no, we, we were looking forward. <laughs> we had no reason to look back. We were actually looking forward you know, uh, to, well, yeah, to graduate to the next class. And uh, again, uh, uh, we were looking forward sometimes to lessons. We, we, had, uh, we had some really good teachers. You know, and, uh, and instead of uh, it's considering it's a chore, it was really... Uh, uh, it was it was it was good because uh, they would also let us let us talk, you know? and we were pretty few, that, which means we had a little bit of time. Also, there was time for us. And uh, anyway, yeah. JP. So I didn't really catch properly the question. Sorry. Uh, did you feel that whilst you're at AC, there was um, kind of I don't know what's the, Nostalgia, uh, nostalgia, it's in it. nostalgia. Was there uh, some sort of nostalgia at AC whilst you were there? Like looking back on the past and... Oh, nostalgia. I mean, not, no. not of the students and their home lives, but of life at AC particularly. As the heist used to be in the time we were there, looking back. No, I think the sense I got was that, um, is this grandiosity about it, you know? You know, there's this sense of grandiosity of the past of it, uh, especially coming from the background I am, I was, you know, you're, you're very thankful all the time to be there. You just have to be thankful, you know, you're like, you know, I look at the situation and just come out, you know, you're too, you know, thankful and stuff like that. Um, and also sometimes I feel like you have to rise to the, you know, so, all right, you don't come here for a small thing. You have to, you know, get on it, you know, be out there trying to get rid of your stuff. Because every time we had a, a, the Monday meeting in the Britain Stock Hall, you know, I remember the first catchphrase of uh, uh, God bless his soul, and our headmaster, and he always opened up. I think I remember, I remember, you are the future leaders of this world. <laughs> you know it's quite heavy <laughs> it's quite heavy and and i know it has affected a lot of people this is another mental issue you know other people kind of felt like if their life didn't pan out like that that one you know, and i think it's affected a lot of people over the years you know different uh, sets you know 
Uh, I have one aspect to someone I think uh, I met on the bus stop, you know, have become a drug addict, you know. And I feel like, you know, I felt I can't make it work, da da da, you know. And some conversation, you know, you feel like you, you know, because uh, we all don't have the similar sort of, uh, uh, what do you call, it? safety net, you know. And at different levels of safety net and all the system you are, or potential you have at your doorstep to just, you know, step on it and go on with your life or create what you want, you know. And some of them, so I'm sorry, some people uh, have that platform after that and go and do great things. But, you know, it looks fantastic, but sometimes you're like, where's the soul here? You know, I like to put a bit of spiritual here. You know, so where's the soul here? Because in a tiny college experience, there's a bit of that soulness, which I think Ulrich is trying to mention about, too academic, too in the head, you know. Uh, people are lovely people. People are interested in nature and, you know, uh, animals and, you know, I want to do circus. I want to be a performer, all these things, you know. Uh, play, just work with the children and stuff like that, you know. And all that together makes that beautiful, you know, but to put us in one direction to be, you know, El Duce. <laughs> in everywhere you are and you can see people since they have the platform and stuff and they go out there and do it you know and it's great to see it but sometimes like uh okay all right i don't know how to put it in in good words yeah i don't know if that answers to you uh, i have a tendency of getting off okay it was a bit more about the future like than the past but it was so interesting <laughs> thank um, you yeah, okay. um Jo um, Jojo, you had a, um, a, a final question about um, so uh, specific songs that I think would be a nice quick fire question to put to both and that might give us a nice soundtrack for each, uh, for, each for, the, for the decades in question. Yeah, um, I was just wondering if there are any like specific songs or music that you really associate with your time at AC. I love the daffodils. Na 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 na. Everybody knows this one <laughs> from the camping. There you go. Yeah. All right. Yeah, the, actually, I have <clears throat> I have two songs. I just remember. There's this song called "Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds." <laughs> we had. Uh, uh, we had Maitland Walker and he's and uh, practicing it, uh, playing it all the time in the tithe barn, you know, and uh, yeah, and I think uh, he's, he must have been singing it till his grave, you know. I think it has a meaning which probably is obvious to most people here. Lucy in the sky with diamonds. It's one thing uh, it, I associate. And the other one, more serious, is the Carmina Burana. You know, <laughs> that uh, Brian Caston was uh, was doing with us. It was it was very noisy and it was great. You know? <laughs> great. Th um, th thanks for that. JP. What was your what was the pop song that you were putting on in the search when you were? Oh it, has be, it has to be Will Will Grace um, play that to death. Because he was even my next door in <laughs> in the hall uh, from the other oasis, uh, baby. <laughs> I would never. It, it's always always think of that, and and it's amazing now. Now he he does his uh, DJing music thing, and uh, and and he kind of suddenly has this breath of music from all over the world. I'm like, oh, there is a God. <laughs> so I was joking about him with that. So yeah. Yeah. Good, good. Uh, I, I'm not sure if Alexander's on the call, um, but Jenna, I think you are, right? Do you want to? You've got a um, got an interesting question for for the two. Okay, yeah, um, I've got a couple of questions. My first one is: If you were able to talk to your younger self when you first started AC, what would you tell them, if anything? So yeah. Um, Ulrich, would you like to go first? It's a very interesting, it needs a bit of reflection, but uh, what I would tell myself, uh, um, well, I probably did tell myself, it's just 
come on uh, it's uh, you know uh, you can do it something like that and uh, and uh, oh sorry my dog doesn't agree <laughs> <laughs> JP? No. Younger self, I wish I had an understanding of all the apparatus and potentiality that the network and the college had, you know, and I didn't really grasp it at all. Because I remember, <laughs> I remember going to these American interviewings of colleges and all that, da, da, da. And I said, so what do you think? I, said, I literally was just for me, you know, you have to prepare for those things and, and uh, your dreams and academic, I don't know what you want to do. I just went like, I thought it was just a chat. <laughs> I remember sitting there. <laughs> and I'm sure maybe they were sitting there with a form, you know, each college interviewing you, you know, go like, okay, da, 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 you know, and uh, I just like, da, 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 and I just got, like, maybe that was a cross, okay, not this guy, right? So I had no clue the ramifications later that I got to understand that most most young people because I didn't have parents that understood what I went into you know mm -hmm. and the potentiality of it you know because most what I got to understand was parents who bring their children there and say if you go to that college you can go to Oxford Cambridge American all this you know you know you can pan it out I could see you know that's that's what you know, like that they have this whole umbrella as a target, so I didn't have that. And sometimes I used like, you know what, maybe that was a blessing in, in, <laughs> in, you know, in a hidden way. You know, when I hear stories like, oh, it's a religion, the scholarship of a Pakistani person go like ended up being an um, whatever, you know, it's, it's to be horrible to be in that position. But to have escaped like that sort of thing is like, okay, fine. But other people, uh, you could have that guidance, you know, uh, so to can maximize and you take your decisions fully aware, you know, with this background that like you are trying to do now to understand the past, and the present and the future, you know, like this context, this, you know, where you are there to have it, to have it. This is a good database to just like, to have it. And people can understand and map them out and, and the probability. Yeah, I think. Well, that's really interesting. Jenna, okay, um, and my your, next, your next question is, um, I, I'm just wondering if uh, you put yours and then um, maybe Kafura, your question feels like it sort of will help guide the answers a little bit. So maybe if we could have like a sort of double question. So Jenna, if you want to give yours. Yeah, then... totally. I think mine's quite similar to Kafura. So if she wants to go instead, but it's just um, mine's more about um, the your life after AC. So do you think you lived the UWC values um, after you left AC, so whether that was in your personal or professional life. So yeah. And Kafura, would you like to put your put yours as well? Because I think that might help um, hone in on. Okay. Um, so mine was what principles or ideals were valued the most during your time at AC? Um, was it freedom of expression? Was it diversity or sustainability? Um, also, was it influenced by the political atmosphere of the time? Um, the life after the AC and the principles? Um, is, is that it? But that was the did first you, question. Yeah. Did, did you live, how, you know, how did you feel that you were able to live your UWC values? And I think Kafura's question was... Um, sort of, you know, uh, for some uh, reason, I always thought that the UWC was something pri separate, apart. It probably influenced me more than I, 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 I was aware, but I was definitely not, uh, because some of the experience were the, so odd, uh, you know, so that <laughs> I... It, uh, it, it probably did, it was, was a driving force, certainly, but, but not, not explicitly that I was really aware of. It. So it must have been there somewhere, you know, also those principles. Um, yeah, and then uh, the, the uh, what was the, the other question? Uh, the follow-up question was about... Uh, um, what principles were most valued during your time ah, at yes, yes, I think freedom of expression. It was very important at our time, uh, and it still is. Uh, 
Diversity, uh, yeah, it's important. I mean, it shaped my life, but it's not something that was overwhelming during our time at AC. It was, it was pretty homogeneous, the setup, and, and the culture was, uh, was, was definitely British, uh, yeah. And, 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 and so diversity was something that uh, maybe flowed out of the experience that you are, are, are no longer in the stifling German environment. So uh, I have, um, yeah, yeah, I have children uh, from different continents and uh, it is diversity is, is just, uh, I don't consider it something unconscious, it, it just happens, yeah, and uh, yeah. Um, I, I think for me, um, he kind of equipped a certain level of sensitivity, you know, the experience of AC, you know, and I find myself carrying it everywhere. And uh, I remember being in AC because in a way we lived in a most of a cocooned way, you know, you have activities, you go to school, uh, school your thing you're doing there, your social life, everything was in between there. So we are so... Um, uh, kept away from the rest of the world, all right? And I remember the first shock, I went to travel to um, Cardiff, and saw how people behaved one another, and I was shocked, I was like, people do that? Because I've been too much, you know, in this dream world, all right? And I remember I had uh, an example uh, going among my people, Bruneians in London, and I sat there and I started talking to them how the world is wonderful and everything. And they all looked at me and were like, where do you live? Which planet do you live? You know? <laughs> I mean, racism is everywhere, you know? I was like, huh? No, it's because you, you are so put in a cotton wool, you know? A cotton wool and then, and it slaps in your face when you get people really living it every day in a row, you know? And, you know, you have to kind of almost breathe. It's like, oh, okay, oh, I need, because you found that sometimes people, like my cousin came and lived with me when I was a uni, and I had a, a, um, a Greek girlfriend, and I was sitting with her and with her Greek uh, friends, who were mostly male, and uh, she sit with me, I see my cousin look at me horrified. I was like, what's the matter with you? I was oh, man, you're not worried? You know, you're taking their woman, <laughs> and you see that this male that can, you don't worry they can do something, you know? I was, like, I was like, whoa, 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 you know? I said, where are you operating from, you know? And he goes, I said, no, why, why would that be, you know? And then later it goes like, he goes, oh man, you become a white man, that's what he told me, you know? And then he told me that, and I said to him, that's interesting. I said, so if you put me next to that white man there, you put them together, me and that person, do you think we're the same? And he goes, nah, nah. Okay, so he put me a Burundian person from my country, me and them. Do you see me the same? He goes, nah, nah, nah. So I said, what does that mean then? I said, I am me. So I think this experience in a way it will cut you out from every side. You know, in a way of thinking and looking at things, you know, and what it has done for me and we soon understood that I, I have to keep this confidence because when I do like music, I do this festival as a musicians, it's called uh, Black Music Touring Europe. And good thing I learned about the history of black performers in the West as a black music, it's another whole topic. And you go in Europe, you do this festival of black music, audience is white, musicians are white, everyone organizes white, and you're the only person who are there in front of the audience and uh, the black music, and you're the only black in the whole entire thing, you know? And uh, I've had people <laughs> who are white come and say, you know what, that's very interesting. You know, I see you standing there and you do this and, you know, and I think for these values of our Chandi College, because it's like you've been sent out there, you know? You know, you've been sent out there with these sort of values, international understanding, Patience, I was talking earlier, stuff like that, because you know, it's almost you have a secret mission, <laughs> because you know out there, <laughs> it's not all that we had within Atlantic College or within our thing, you know? So, wherever you are, 
is like a secret mission. So, and I can always see people trying to figure out when I'm in a certain environment, you know, by race, by, by class, whatever, it's there. I could see people going ahead, trying to figure out, you know, how you standing there and, you know, trying to find all this symbolism they, they are used to, you know, you gotta be powerful, you gotta be rich, you gotta be this, you gotta, you know, you know what's, what's with you, you know? And you could see people in their mind just getting completely don't know. And it's beautiful when I got to understand it. I just take time with it, you know, until someone really wants to know more. So I think those values, you know, Tony College, um, it gave me the faith that it's possible, that it can be done or it can be tried to, you know, it, it's not perfect. There's nothing perfect in here. So we try to work towards there. And uh, walking there, you don't have to expect that you have to be complete in your lifetime, but you are the seeds. I really like uh, Kepo, your question. I, I just wonder whether everyone on the call, just whilst we've got two more student questions to come, and then we'll move to wrap things up. I'm just wondering, as we move into um, in, uh, towards the end, whether we could all perhaps put in um, what uh, other principles that um, that were valued in our time in AC, because I know we've got multiple years on on the call. Maybe in the chat thread, any ideas that come up? Thanks, those Katie's brilliant suggestions so thanks thanks for that katie um so just um maybe current students that we can all pop into uh, into the chat um whilst we listen to uh get, go through sophia and chadda's questions so so um sophia i think um your first question was um about um uh do you want to sort of um lead lead off with that Yes, can everyone hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, my first question was, um, what did you personally or the community, um, college community as a whole, struggled the most with at the, that time? Sorry, I didn't catch really properly the question. Okay. Um, what did you personally or the college community struggled the most with back at your time in AC? Can I go first? I think, sorry, I think I have a very brief answer. Uh, at our time, it was definitely the, uh, the political polarization uh, because uh, times were rough. I'm not saying nothing has improved on any of the counts that were, uh, we suffered through. Uh, I mentioned at the, at the very beginning, if some of, some of you might remember what happened in 68 and 67. So it was definitely the political polarization that went as far as to open hostility, you know, uh, especially between our uh, Arab and, and Palestinian students and uh, the one or two Israelis that we had. Uh, in, in, and, and that has become worse over the years. Yeah. I'm not talking about Vietnam. Yeah. That even there we had polarization. So, so it was political polarization. Yeah. Even though there were small steps back from the Cold War. Yes, there were. Uh, we had a visit by a Russian delegation which were, who were so impressed. Yeah. Mostly uh, Russian teachers, female teachers. Uh, you know, we expected some kind of, I don't know who, what we expected, but not what we visited us and these, these are very uh, brave people. Yeah. Um, JP, over to you. I think it's around the same thing because I remember once uh, our second year uh, as Africans, they were not happy with something they realized that was a very sort of a, a racist or uh, demeaning or something. I didn't really grasp it then. Uh, I remember we all blacks, you know, came together and we marched into, <laughs> we marched into the headmaster's office, you know. And I remember uh, the headmaster and the vice headmaster sitting with us and trying to reason us. And I remember it was a, such a strong uh, feeling that we felt like uh, something's going on. And I remember even right after all the Africans start sitting on the same table, you know, and, uh, and it just kind of, you know, it was brewing, you know, and I, and I think the headmaster came and talked to us and stuff like that because 
there, there were particular people of uh, you know very huge sensitivity because the people leading it were coming uh, from so, so part of South Africa, you know, from Namibia, South Africa. You know, they were so sensitive about that. You know, they could see like for me, I lived in this East Central East Africa. The problem is you know between the the race, the the color stuff is between ethnics. So for me, there I was kind of like wee, you know. But for people who come from South Africa and and say like you know what, this is a black and white thing. And I remember that existed there quite a lot. Um, uh, and, and there was never a conversation, you know, as a whole, as a, in a school and stuff that, it was just like, dealt in the office, put on the carpet, it's gone, you know? So that, that I can remember that, yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, so let's, um, I see we've got Chadda and Auden are the final, um, the final questions. Maybe you could sort of, um, we could ask your two together because they're sort of um, related. I, I feel like we've spoken, um, Chadda, um, about the diversity of the of the college. Um, so uh, and some of the issues surround, sur surrounding that. So um, maybe you could ask one of your second or third questions, um, and then Auden, you could chip in with yours, and then I think we'll um, move to move to closing. Um, are, are you there, Chad? Yes, yes. Um, so my question is, uh, if you have visited the college in the last few years, does it feel the same to you as back when you were a student? And if it's not, then what is the difference? Rich? It's muted. Yes, I, 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 it's definitely different from when I was, I don't feel remind, reminded of our old days. First of all, the housing is better, much, much better. I mean, the, 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 we were living really in, in what one would have, would nowadays call refugees barracks, uh, the type of things that uh, refugees would put in, 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 if you are lucky enough to get off Moro yeah. and, and, and those uh, locations of shame so no it's 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 much better uh, and and of course uh, there is uh, conversations are, are very very interesting on the students there are so many of them from all over the place and you know with each of them you can have a a, a discussion and that i think is uh, is, is is tremendous yeah? so it, it's 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 different can't compare <laughs> Um, JP, over to you. I remember that last reunion. I went to see our house we lived in, the Silkstone, and now it's changed. It's still the same. <laughs> Not even a, a paint on it. It's the same. But which is, the, in a way, it's, in one hand, it's it's nice. It's really kind of like staying still. <laughs> I mean, um, but in terms of maybe it was short enough to to understand what sort of climate in terms of people and attitudes, you know. Uh, I can say that I didn't feel that the warmth maybe we felt when we were there as, you know, the year, we, you know. Um, I didn't feel this excitement in a young people there, you know, being there somehow. Maybe we're too short to judge, you know, or to have a, a clear mind to it, but, um, uh, when I see emails come back and forth, <laughs> what's going on and reporting the problem, this problem, that, uh, I don't think it can be the way it was. So, <laughs> yeah, probably. I don't know if I can, if that answers it all. Can I add something? Yeah. Uh, I would like to add, uh, last year's uh, alumni meet, uh, this, this group that met last year, uh, there was one, <laughs> one of our colleagues, he said, Look, I feel like we are in a cult. I walk up to my dormitory and the students come and say, hello, how are you? <laughs> Have you had your lunch and all that? Uh, can I help you with something? So I think that's, uh, that's a very sweet observation. Yes, yeah. we are a cult, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. Actually, on that, and that actually, it's good you bring it up, actually, is that uh, uh, when you leave a C, uh, you, we, there's a whole trying to keep on clinging on it. 
And we all know people been there when you have partners who've never been there. So hard to get your partners, you know, you have your partner there and the other one has their partner, the other has their partner. And what we meet is this sheer energy of the three parts come together and everybody feels like they're just, what is just going on here? You know, suddenly though the partner is there, they look at the, what just happened there, you know? So there's a danger, be careful, that whole balancing thing uh, that we, we, we get this sort of, um, I don't know, we can't put it in words, you know? Uh, it's a sheer, it's a sheer energy that uh, I think is the, that sort of, I don't know, it's kind of like the potential of something that could be where we cling on that's so strong, you know, but other people stand there because they never experienced it. I just scrub in the head as what's going on here. So that is something to explore. What is that? Yeah. Um, great. Um, Auden, um, I think we'll just limit uh, Ulrich and JP to um, to a sentence each with the, with the answer to your question, but I think that might be that might be appropriate. Um, uh, I think that yeah, definitely. Uh, so my question is just um, if you were to you know in a sentence describe the political uh, atmosphere uh, at the college uh, when you were there, um, how would you describe? So like what uh, sort of value structures and uh, sort of um, uh, leanings within politics that people generally have? Just uh, keep your answers brief, um, Ulrich and JP, over to you. Well, I think I, I talked about that already. So I think I, I covered that point. No. Okay, oh, that, that's, no. that's brief. <laughs> <laughs> Not decisive enough, I think. All right, <laughs> that's mysterious. I'm, I have to push you a little bit more. What do you mean? <laughs> I mean, you have, okay, we are in an environment that is supposed to be left wing in a way, all right? And um, I remember one student got expelled uh, trying to be very right, uh, left wing, you know, and probably there were other things going on and stuff like that. Uh, but in terms of discussing it, even in depth and stuff like that, you know, theory of knowledge classes, you know, TOK, remember those classes, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, there's always, it's almost like let, let the horse go and then hold back. Let the horse go, you know, the confidence to have the right people, um, the right people to just hold the, 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 the perimeter to go into it, you know. Maybe the fear is that because we're living in a cocoon, you know, the whole thing is to take the students away from the world and get them to forge something. So if you, <laughs> if you put fire right in there, and within that four walls in a cocoon, maybe it might not. <laughs> so it has to be... Uh, they have to kind of look into it how, uh, in a healthy way, that people get really to the bottom of things and uh, reassure people that, uh, you know, it doesn't matter whatever op opinion you have or far out, whatever. You know, that tolerance, you know, because that will bring more confidence and, and more action and more activity right after the alumni communities and all that, you know. It has to be, uh, build the capacity in that, you know because otherwise there's a missing the train. Yeah. All right, um, super. Well, um, I'm, thank you, JP and oh, Ulrich. Um, this, is, uh, this is amazing. I've uh, had, you've said so many lovely things that have um, touched me. I mean, JP, your story about arriving with just your, just your, your tiny bag because you were straight from hospital in Kenya. Um, that's, um, you know, very, really powerful. So, uh, you know, thank you for, for sharing that. And Ulrich, your, you know, uh, idea of the door closing on the life, you, your normal life and it opening on something, um, something else altogether. 
um, I don't know. That certainly was my was was my experience. Um, I feel like we've we've gotten to touch upon you know some of you know some of the positives and also some of the sort of challenges of being students. Um, students, brilliant set of questions, um, and I think um, what I'd um, what I'd like to do because I'm conscious that we've kind of run well over time. Um, in, um, is that um, is that we um, that I hand the floor now over to Chloe and Harry, our alum film producers, in order to sort of take start a discussion about you know what we took away from that and just think about concretely how can 